Welcome to Good Spirit Graphics. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at MogulBlend's new update 1.0.7, which is compatible with Blender's new 2.77 release. Okay, let's get started. This tutorial contains the following sections. The new X-Up and Y-Up camera option, and the new perspective camera option. Blender's latest version is 2.77. There were some changes made in this version that were incompatible with MochaBlend. So I updated MochaBlend and now there is a new version, 1.07. You'll need this to work in Blender 2.77. Now while I was at it, I added a couple new features to help you work in the 3D view inside Blender with Mocha data. Now since we'll be working in the 3D view, we're going to get out of Blender's Movie Clip Editor here and go back to the default setup, which on my computer has the 3D view here. Now let's go ahead and split the 3D view here, and we'll go ahead and put the Movie Clip Editor on the left side, Then we'll close down this toolbar we don't need, and go to the Miscellaneous tab, which is where MochaBlend lives, and also let's see, we have MochaBlend not at the top of the add-on stack, so let's just go ahead and move it up a little bit, put the other add-ons below it to get them out of the way. Now this new version of MochaBlend 1.07 here has a couple changes to the interface. The first one you might notice is you have a Y-Up and Z-Up selector here. Let's go ahead and hover over it, and it says select the up axis for the camera and objects. What that means is you're going to have your camera pointed along the y-axis with the top of the camera going in this direction. This is what you always got before. So let's go ahead and create a camera. Now some people requested to have a z-up option, so I went ahead and added that. So you can either change it before or after you create your camera simply by clicking on this. Then MochaBlend might warn you that you have a camera transform problem. So now you just click on reset camera and you'll see if we zoom out a little bit that MochaBlend has now put your camera straight up. Now this doesn't just reorient your camera. If you hover over here, you'll also see it says MochaBlend camera and objects oriented to the global z-axis. So all the objects you create here with MochaBlend will also be aligned with the new camera orientation. So let's go ahead and get something from Mocha that we can put in here. We'll go ahead and take this track here. Let's see, we'll take the roto data first. Now remember, when you bring Roto over to Mocha Blend inside Blender, we're going to use the new Roto Paint exporter. Now that does not have the image format dimensions and frame rates and all that good stuff. So what we're going to do first is take the hand track over, export the tracking data, and we're going to select After Effects, Corner Pen Only here, copy to clipboard. Let's go back to Blender and paste it in. We do that first so MochaBlend can get all this format data here. Now let's just go back to Mocha real quick. And this time let's take the Roto and let's export that shape data here. MochaBlend Blender uses the Nuke Roto Paint exporter. So let's copy that to the clipboard. Then go back to Blender and paste that in. MochaBlend is then going to hang on to all that format information for you. So let's go ahead and create a spline. Let's do a wire spline and click on Create Shape Mask. So let's go ahead and scrub through our timeline here. Looks like MochaBlend did a good job of bringing in the data. Now, we don't really know if it lines up because if we look through our camera, we didn't bring the background in yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and select the image sequence here. We'll drop it into Blender, and we'll probably need to set up a couple of things because Blender isn't going to automatically set the frame range for image sequences. Now let's change this from single image to image sequence. And you'll see here, theoretically, you can click on match movie length, and it's supposed to come up with the movie length here, but it doesn't always do it. So let's see, 1 to 222. Let's go ahead and put... 222 frames and you'll see there it pops into place and if we click on I think it's already going to update it but maybe we have to click on auto refresh here 
Now, if we scrub our timeline, you should see our footage is synced up perfectly with our spline. Now let's press zero on our keyboard to get out of camera view. And you'll see we have our spline oriented right there with our camera. Now, if we go ahead and switch our camera to a Y up configuration, it's going to warn us about the camera transform again. So let's click on reset camera that will put our camera straight up and down. Now you see it did not reset the object that we created. It can't really do that retroactively. It's too complicated with all the lens settings you could have your focal lengths and all that stuff. So you're going to have to choose whether you want a Y up or Z up camera ahead of time. If we go ahead and click on create shape mask now with the camera in this configuration, you're going to see we get a, another spline here that is oriented this way. Let's go ahead and rotate our view around a little bit and you'll see they're both animated. If We look through our camera. That one will be set up for our current Y up configuration and our other one will be right here, straight up and down. You normally wouldn't have two in the scene at the same time. So let's go ahead and select that spline and click on delete. We'll switch back to Z up and reset our camera one more time here. And it should still be lined up there. Good. Now, if we go back to the mocha blend panel, you'll see another change here. Instead of create 2d camera, it now says create camera. Now, previous versions of Mocha Blend only worked with an orthographic camera. Now, if we select our camera and go to the little camera tab here, you'll see it has orthographic selected. An orthographic camera is a camera where all the light rays are parallel and there is no perspective in your shot. Now, this is useful for compositing different images together when you want them all to line up straight. But if you want to put some 3D objects into your shot, this isn't that useful. So now if we switch to a perspective camera, You'll see our camera is changed here in Blender and also Mocha Blend is warning us that there is a lens setting problem. Now that's because it's identified that you've put a perspective camera in here and it's going to warn you that if you look through the camera, nothing's going to line up anymore. Now what Mocha Blend needs to do is reset the camera so the field of view of the camera is lined up with the field of view of the objects that are created along this X axis here. Let's go ahead and click on reset camera. And now if we look through the camera, you'll see everything lines up perfectly again. Now let's add a 3D object to our scene. And we'll do that by going back to Mocha. And this time we'll export some tracking data. So let's go ahead, click on export tracking data and select After Effects transform data right here. Copy to clipboard. Go back to Mocha Blend and paste it in. Now it says we have transform data loaded. That's fine. And we'll go ahead and create a transform empty. And you'll see it'll be right in the position where in Mocha, the center of the blue surface area was. So as this tracks through our footage in Blender now, this null here, and if we go ahead and select it, will also track through exactly in the same spot. Now let's go ahead and parent a 3D object to our tracking empty here. Let's go ahead and first click on Shift S for moving our 3D cursor to the selected object. It's going to jump from here to here. Now let's go ahead and create our object. Let's create the ever popular monkey or Suzanne here. And then we'll go down here and parent it to our transform by just picking it up and dropping it here. See, now it is parented to our transform. And if we scrub our timeline, you see it should be moving with our tracking data. But as you can see, it is actually slipping around a little bit. Now, why is this happening? Well, let's go back to our texture settings here and take a look and you'll see we have the start frame, which is the global starting frame of the movie sequence. Assuming the first picture has a one, which means one as its first frame number. Well, we need to actually start on frame one of our Blender sequence because that's how Mocha Blend keyframes everything. And you'll see it is also still not lined up perfectly. And that's because this particular image sequence has its first frame number on a zero. Now, Blender actually uses this number here to orient itself or to align itself to the actual data. So what we need to do is tell Blender to use an extra frame here and if we go ahead and stick it on 
2, it's going to line up perfectly. We'll go ahead and zoom in. Now if we scrub our timeline, you'll see our object and our spline are now tracking perfectly with our footage. Now what if you don't like the amount of perspective that your camera has right now? Well, let's go ahead and select our camera and you'll see we are on a perspective camera. Now in prior versions of MochaBlend, you only had an orthographic camera, so you had no perspective and there was nothing to adjust. Now we can go ahead and change our camera lens settings like this and pretty dramatically change the amount of perspective in our shot. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and really make it a wide angle camera like this. Let's do something crazy and put it down to like seven. And you'll see it has thrown everything off and MochaBlend is now warning you your lens setting is wrong. So it is wrong for the camera. So the way we fix that is go ahead and click on reset camera. Now with the camera reset, you can see everything is going to track perfectly like it did before. Now we have a wide angle lens on our object here. Now I don't really like the way this looks here all blocky. So let's go ahead and um, select our Suzanne. We'll add a subserve to it. And we'll also, let's see, raise it up a level and maybe even just for good measure, let's go ahead and put smooth shading on so it looks a little better. Now, if we want our perspective to change in our shot, we could, for example, let's see, we could start here with a wide angle lens. Um, let's make it logical. The hand moves out towards you. So let's go ahead and on, say, the last frame here, let's... Um, show you another new feature by clicking on the camera tab and our focal length is set for seven. Uh, we can get really crazy here. Let's go ahead and stick it on three. Let's go ahead and reset our camera. Okay, that is kind of ludicrous, but it will demonstrate the power of the perspective camera here. Now let's go ahead and add a keyframe here. We can insert it with a right click or we can just press I over here and you'll see we have added a keyframe here on frame 222. Well, let's go to the first frame here. Frame, let's go to frame one. And at this point, let's go ahead and put a real long lens in here. Let's say 120 millimeters, something like that. Okay. And let's go ahead and add another keyframe here. Now you'll see normally, um, you can't really have the camera set up with its field of view for two separate positions, except Mocha Blend now has the ability to animate your camera and take a look at the focal length per frame. So if we click on reset camera here, you'll see MochaBlend is going to add keyframes to your camera. So the field of view of the camera will always match your shot, even though the focal length is changing pretty radically. You can see our perspective is changing pretty crazily here down to something like three, and it starts off way back here. Now this lets you do crash zooms because what MochaBlend is actually doing, if we go ahead and move out of camera view, as you'll see, at the end of our shot, our camera is fairly close to our object here. But at the start of the shot, it is way, way out here with this very long lens. As we move through the shot, MochaBlend is adjusting the position of your camera. And it's doing that so the field of view here is going to always match the field of view of the created objects. Now this is a powerful feature and it should give you lots of flexibility over the perspective in your shot, even if you want to put a keyframed focal in. Now there's one more setting I want to show you that has to do with the default camera that was created. If you remember, when we clicked on Create Camera, MochaBlend created an orthographic camera by default. Now it did that because if you go to the User Preferences tab, go to Add-ons, and you'll see under MochaBlend, you have some default settings that you can put here. The first one under 3D view is the camera type. If you work primarily with a perspective camera, go ahead and switch this to perspective, click on save user settings. And now when you create new cameras with create camera, MochaBlend will by default create a perspective camera.